Terraforming in Minecraft is my absolute favorite, creating massive landscapes to explore. Recently, Minecraft 1.19 announced they would not be updating Birch Force. I was really sad at first, but then I realized I could use this opportunity to transform the Minecraft Birch Forest into my own Birch Forest update. So today I am happy to present my version of the Birch Forest update. Over 100 custom trees, 150 days played, with a biome extending more than 500 blocks across. Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. Be sure to leave a like and please subscribe as it helps me out a ton, but let's get rocking. Before we can even start transforming this island, I need to clear out all of the acacia trees. This time I'm being smart and setting up the beacon. There we go. Now I love acacia leaves, so we're actually gonna gather all these up too. That was a lot more leaves than I thought it would be. We already have this old double chest basically full too. But on to chopping down all of the trees. Now that we've got a ton of leaves and logs to work with, we can get started on today's project. And at least I have a storage room to drop off all the acacia logs. And the leaves are just gonna go in here. Now that we've cleared out the land, I'm realizing just how flat this area is. So I'd like to bring in two small mounds, one right over here, as well as bringing this up over here. I don't think that much dirt's gonna do it. Flying over to the snowy plains biome, I do have my secret dirt gathering spot ready to go. Dirt in the box and I am ready to start terraforming on this project. For this peninsula, I want to first create a lake out of the dip in the land, run a road through this entire area for future expansions, lastly including a huntsman cabin in the woods with a bunch of fun details in there. Starting with the lake area, as I want to dig up some more dirt, I worked with the existing terrain to smooth out the bottom of the lake with the dirt and dug out some more areas before bringing in a bunch of buckets of water to fill in the entire space. Right, there we have the base idea for the lake in place. With that I can get started by placing in some of the guidelines for the hills to make sure the shape is looking good. Second half of the dirt outlines are now in, and boy do we have a lot of dirt placing to do. A little test here on the backside is done and I like it. We'll eventually add in some rocks to clean up these steeper edges, but this should look really cool once we've got it going throughout the entire area. But first I want to get the rest of the plans in over on this half. And there we have it. The entire rough idea is now down for the shapes of these hills. Time to place in a bunch of dirt and fill them in. Villagers aside, I'm starting to realize there's a big potential issue with this. Lots of mobs spawning under the train. Oh, look at all the drowned. Oh, he's looking at me. Nope, nope, nope. So before we do anything else too crazy, let's light up the dark spaces. This way it is an instant death when I eventually do fall through the floor. There we go. That should keep us a lot safer. Back to dirt placing. And here we have it. The entire first hill is complete. Nope, what? ignore it, ignore it. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. And there we have it. The entire first hill is now done. Yep. And the best worst part is I'm down to uh, just that much dirt left. Everything else is empty. This is a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. And there we are now completely out of dirt. Now I've been thinking before I cover up everything, I'm always needing more gravel. And there is so much in here. So I'm gonna spend a little while collecting up a good portion of it. And then we'll be back on the dirt grind. One shulker box completely filled, and all I took out was this small section. But for now, I need a ton more dirt, and we have a decent amount in here, but that's not gonna cut it. Repairing the tools and back over to the dirt farm. And there we have it, four shulker boxes and some change. This should definitely be enough dirt. And you can barely tell we were here. UFO trees everywhere. Ooh. Well, it's time to get back to doing what I do best, placing a bunch of dirt blocks down and creating some hills. Placing in over 8,000 dirt blocks, you can see where we started from today. And now look at where we're already at and we haven't even started the forest. Taking some moss, I wanna add some highlights across the top of these hills. I am now realizing that I could have saved a bunch of time by doing this first, but it's fine. It, it's fine. I'm fine. It's all fine. It's fine. After mossyifying the landscape, I brought a bunch of coarse dirt in to create the road leading throughout the entire forest. 
a bunch of progress has been made on the landscape already and next up we need some trees to actually turn this into a forest wait oh my gosh i forgot something super important i've got to plant a new field i really love the flower field from the last episode so we're doing remix round two this time alliums Next up, I also need some more rooted dirt. And we've got an azalea tree right here. I've already taken it. Already got that tree too. Please, please, please. No. Oh, I didn't do all of it. Yes. No more rooted dirt in here, but that should be enough to get us through. Now, this right here is going to be our perfect spot. I got to do it. It's tradition. Will you consider subscribing? If you've enjoyed the video so far, I think you'll enjoy the rest of my content too. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And there we have it, our new Allium field. Side note, if you'd like this texture pack, consider becoming a member. I just released the new update. Moving back over to the trees, I've got a bunch of empty shulker boxes here as we have to chop down an entire birch forest in order to build our own custom birch forest. So for starters, I need to repair the hoe. It's about time to get a better experience farm. This is, this is slow, but it still does the trick, so it's fine. With that, the grind begins. Flying back home and I got a ton more lilies over here. And wow, I love flying underneath that bridge. Maybe that can be like the barrier. Everything inside of that bridge, we transform all of this. But that's for the future as right now we make a forest. From there, I jumped into my creative testing world and started designing some custom birch trees from scratch to see if I could come up with a few varieties I'd like to add into the forest. We've got the idea down for the types of trees that I wanna include inside of here, but to make sure that they fit the scale inside this world, I wanna build a few here to get ourselves started. Off with the tall skinny one. Attempt number two is in, and this does look pretty good for the edge of the forest. But when we get a little bit deeper in the forest, that's a different story. Now for the center of the forest, I want the base of the trees to be bare of leaves. So it looks more like a realistic forest, as if everything is working towards getting as much sunlight in the canopy as possible. Looks a little weird right now, but I think once we get more trees in here and the underbrush, it's gonna blend in really well. And now we've got two tiny trees in here as well. But I'll tell you what, it's time to put two hours on the clock and see how many trees we can build. Each tree is currently taking me about 10 minutes to build, so hopefully I can work through this and speed up a touch or we'll be here for a very, very long time. This is really starting to look like a forest when you're walking around inside of it, but the ground is extremely boring, so it's time to fix that. I also added a few new trees, like these little ones we had along the river, and a little baby birch, and the most important. Now, last episode, I had planned to make a flower farm. That didn't happen but i do have a flower farm in a box and a quick trip back over to world spawn the iron farm i recently found has been producing tons of bone meal which means we can build ourselves a flower farm slowing down for a second here though i know this is like probably 30 percent we got to finish covering that hill get some trees along here cover up these hills but already i love this one more interruption i have to when i was grabbing the box i noticed the forest down there barely loading in in the minecraft fog and that i don't even know what to say it just looks so good okay back to regular scheduled programming today i'm after the azure blue flower so we can just take this little spot here and build our own new farm looks like alliums are up here too so i'm definitely gonna merge this way because i those are my favorite flowers Any minute now and we can start harvesting the flowers if this turns into a grass block all right i can't wait any longer now we're done go 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 oh it's loud oh it's so loud we've got a ton of seeds but we've got even more alliums and azure bluettes this is this is good i dropped all the flowers off at the forest shulker monster and we're off to get the next resource warped roots and crimson roots for this we need a quick trip into the nether for some of the crimson nylium and the warped nylium now to get back home thought we could duck some farms right back here into the corner to make all these things 
This space in here should work out, and it's a similar idea to the flower farm, and the design we're using today is by Exumavoid. Loading it with bone meal, and we should be good. Yes, there we go. 30 seconds later, and we're already almost full. Oh, I'm gonna like this farm. I also have a ton of flowering azalea and regular azalea leaves. There. Nearly everything in here is ready to go, but there's one more item that I wanna try using. For this, I'm gonna need a brand new tool, a diamond hoe. Enchanting it, and we got ourselves unbreaking three. Not a bad start. Also gonna need mending, efficiency five, fortune three, and there we go. I wanna head over to the dark oak forest and see if we can get a load of dark oak saplings. Reason being, in order to grow a tree, you have to plant them like that. So if we put a single one, it's a decorative block. Now to see how many we can actually get. Ah, no. There we go, three stacks of dark oak saplings. Now just to remove the stumps. Pretty good bonus of a ton of dark oak logs. Nearly 10 Minecraft days later, we're finally on to the last item, which I'm still regretting that I put inside here, but I need a load of glow lichen. But I lied on that being the last thing because there's one other element I want to add in. Lots of rocks. Poker of stone, cobblestone, tough blocks, and some moss. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I think I can get back to building. I thought it could be nice to create some larger boulders sitting here inside of the forest. Now that, that's a nice boulder. Uh, no, come on now. I was building my rock. A ton of boulders are already in place and it's looking a lot better inside. Now looking at the concept art for the wild update, they had a bunch of mushrooms on trees and I was thinking we could use some jungle slabs to kind of signify that. We also have bushes to add in and some plants along with the tiny trees. The last thing before grass is we find the big sunny spots and add in patches of flowers for the light coming through the canopy. We've also got glow lichen to add to the trees. I wanna add in some of our warped roots and lastly, we need a little bit of tall grass. And here we have a full example of what I hope this forest will look like and what I wish birch forests looked like in Minecraft. Now there's just one thing left to do, build trees over this entire peninsula. I've now spent an entire day IRL building trees for this forest. It's time to take a look at what we have so far. And this, this is looking fantastic. I recently cleared the excess chunks in my world to bring the 1.19 content closer to home and the game froze and it crashed. That's not good. Please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. Don't be dead. Whew. Okay, we are still alive. That's good. The game did not kill us. Oh my God, look what's loading in. One of the swamps turned into a mangrove swamp. <gasps> oh, this is so cool. I purposely avoided everything with the update, so I've never seen these in game before. Oh, we need to find a reason to build a bunch of mangrove trees. Mud, oh mud. Mud has been acquired. Next, we need some mangrove wood, as well as a bunch of the propagules. This should be enough to get us started between a few saplings and a bunch of logs. Now, where are the frogs? Or maybe just a tadpole. Anything? Anything. <gasps> Those are fish. Those, those are not frogs. Those are fish. You know what? You can come live in the lake. We'll find frogs later. Welcome home, my new fishy friends. From here, I decided to stream and work on this project, creating a custom lake bed out of mud, coarse dirt, rooted dirt, and then adding in a ton of sugarcane, bamboo, grass, carrots, wheat, and some bushes for all of the extra little details. Starting on the forager's cottage, I brought a pathway down to the plot of land before trying to build a house that is almost sunken or hidden in the side of the hill. Utilizing the new dried mud block and dried mud brick blocks to create an awesome earthy toned build, I also covered the top of the house with moss to really camouflage it inside of the forest. Amazing stream done, and now it's back to the grind, but check out this house for a forager who's gonna be living in the middle of the forest. Fully decorated out on the inside for a little tiny cramped home. Using mangrove wood and packed mud and mud bricks for the first time with a chest boat and a little dock. I love it. One final element to add in for this section is some bone meal at the bottom of the lake for the grass. Much, much better. And with that, the tree grind continues.
I really started to find my rhythm with building all of these trees, but I want to make sure they all feel unique. Instead of just making cookie cutter trees all over the place and copying the same design each time, I want each tree to be able to stand on its own. So taking the time and care to put that into every single one. Adding in a little bit more detail along the edge of the pathway, we now have a full on forest that we can walk through. This really feels like an entire biome, but I gotta sleep away the scaries. With this, we've now completed over half of the trees needed for the entire forest. I really don't like the grass color we're getting over here being in the stony shore biome. So to better match everything else, I think we just spread moss across the entire area. But from here, so it isn't as daunting of a task. Good word, Fripp, good word. I'm gonna go back and add in all of the foliage underneath the trees for the forest that we built so far. Cause right now I have only done that section. A few hours spent going through the same process that we've already seen many, many times inside of this video. As the forest grows, so does the scale of everything we're doing. The forest expansion is now complete, going all the way around the back of the hill. Now we've just gotta get back to building so many more trees. Okay, let's do it. I'm very sad. The biome coloring is making these not look that great. So it might mean it's just very heavy on the birch trees on this side, which it is a birch forest, so not bad. Small problem coming up here as I only have one stack of birch leaves left. Before we run back over to the birch forest and gather up a bunch more leaves, I do want to add in another building being a hunter's lodge. Something like this should work out. With a small workstation over here for some sort of a storage shed and include a dog kennel because we always need more good boys. Seeing as we're nearly in the home stretch, I'm going to also plan out where all of the trees are going to go. And here I was thinking I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is a lot of trees. Well, time to get more logs and leaves. There we go. The hoe is now repaired. Time to go chop a forest down. Plenty of leaves ready to go. And I even found a bee nest, which I think we can throw right up here. Now I've probably got an entire day or two of tree building ahead of me in order to finish this entire forest. So let's get started. This area is filling out really nicely on top of the hill. A bit annoyed by the biome coloring on the oak leaves, but all of this is new in here and we've got plenty more to go. I put down so many points to grow trees out of this and I've been trying to fill in as many as I can. Missed a wall. And it's so full in here. This side of the forest is probably twice as dense as our original. So I can save some time. And we can just remove a few of these. Right. That was about 15 trees removed. And it still looks really full. Ending the first day of building new trees by finishing off the outer perimeter on the east edge of the forest. And I can finally get a glimpse of what this is going to look like from the town. And it looks Good. My favorite part is from deep inside the forest right here. You can barely see any way out of it. All you know is you gotta follow the path to where more trees need to pop up. But I've been thinking as a way to save myself some time, they did need some timber to build up these new houses. So a spot with a few tree stumps really can't hurt, especially as we get more moss on log and a little guy growing back up. Loading up on blocks one final time for one final push, building birch trees to finish off the canopy of this forest. Replay mod decided to crash on me and I lost about three hours of time-lapse footage building new trees. So here's me sitting in a chess boat, all sad. So close. It's fine, fine, really. I just, I built some really good trees and it's, it's fine. It's fine. We've got to place the leaves on these final trees we got built up over here and a few more to build down that way. Let's hope this time-lapse works. Woo! Rome was not built in a day and neither was this birch forest. I have been at this for over a week 
IRL. But we're in the final stretch now. A few big birch trees still have to be finished up. Then I've got to make a few smaller ones as well. All before we can start the final stage of the ground foliage. I've been building up birch trees like crazy and we are finally on to the last, the last large birch tree I need to build in this entire area. The rest of the stumps are filled in. Here it is. And he has nothing. Leads and leather. Time to throw some leaves on this tree. Birch trees are complete. I repeat, birch trees are complete. Next up, I need to finish off the little oak and acacia leaf trees. And now we're on to the final steps. Ground foliage coverage. Fancy way of saying flowers, which we can start with in patches, of course, with some variety. Next up, some small bushes to get some more height variety in here. Of course, the dark oak saplings and some azalea bushes. Finally, we make some bone meal and get some tall grass. With one item left on the bucket list, building the hunting lodge. It's time to first take a second to look at what we've built so far. Well, finishing up the forest, I had left some copper out to age, which looks like it's pretty ready to be collected. Except these two, they didn't age at all. Moving on, starting off with this build, we're gonna wanna use some spruce logs on the front and oak going around the back. Throwing some stripped oak logs in, some spruce slabs arching up to the top and working all the way around with some stairs, then some aged copper along the back, which we can detail with the old ax and wax. So more details added in and there we go. The doge kennels. Time to get some puppy dogs. And we've got ourselves a dog house right over here. Sky and Geo can stay up top. No, Geo stay here, straight. And the other two can come with me. Now I know I showed you all this earlier in today's episode, but look at the view from the starter base. Looking down the valley just makes me so happy right now. One build down, but I do need some names for these puppy dogs, so let me know down in the comments. Next up, I'd like to tackle a small storage shed right over here. That's all ready to go, so now it's time for the lodge itself. Now, I really love walking in and out of this area. It is looking absolutely fantastic. I've got to clean up the shulker mess, but there's one more element I would like to add in. A bit of a grand entrance, showing that we're moving to a new zone. And of course, we've got to throw some of the mangrove in all the way along the top. Gonna really liken this on top and a lamp to light our way in. There we go. The Hunter's Lodge is now complete. One last question remains. Is this Birch Forest Gemini Tay approved? Gem, I've called you here for a very specific reason. First, I see you got a totem and try and stay alive, so wear some shoes. Got it, shoes. I built a uh -huh. birch forest. I need to know if it's Gemini Tay approved. Okay, let's check it out. It's looking pretty impressive from this angle. You know what, I'll leave, I'll let you go first. Right ahead, okay. Okay. through the okay. gateway. Ooh, okay, look at the details. It's, it mm -hmm. smells like a birch forest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very, very bright, very birchy. This this is good. You got the lichen, the diorite, all the good blocks. Good blocks, good blocks, okay, okay. I think, Flip, this is Gemini Tay approved. Gemini Tay approved, awesome, great. Perfect. Fantastic. There we have it. Starting from a blank slate of land, I created an entire custom biome in this single video, so be sure to leave a like and please subscribe. I built over 100 unique custom trees and landscaped the entire region, all to create my vision of what Birch Forest should look like inside of Minecraft. Let me know in the comments below. Do you wish Birch Forest received an update to look like this in the wild update? If only we had some fireflies to add to the lake though. But with that, the Birch Forest is complete and I will catch you all on the flip side.